Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It feels good to see you through our computer screens, and it feels good to finally be in front of the camera again. If you're listening to this on Spotify, this episode is also on YouTube. Go check it out. I'm wearing a turtleneck today. As you guys probably know by now, I hope. My name is Gio. Welcome back to OK So. And today our conversation is with Aquila Cornelius, hey, who's danced with literally the biggest stars on the planet. Have you ever heard of Usher? Ooh. Have you ever heard of Beyonce? Ooh, I'm sure you have. And she's lived the dream. And she's here to tell us how she did it. But the most important aspect of this conversation is not just how she explained what dancing is or how she feels the dance that she does. It's more a lesson on perseverance. As artists, we consistently stay tucked into our head. We don't usually like wandering outside. We're very hard critics of ourselves. And Akila, somehow, you're going to see in the conversation coming up, found a balance to that. And if you don't know how to dance and you don't give a shit about dancing, that's fine. The biggest takeaway is how do artists find the balance to be able to critique their own work and continually grow in a healthy manner? Either way, welcome back, guys. It's really good to see you. Here's Aquila Cornelius. And kick the theme song in. Yeah. Okay, so starting off, how are you doing today? I'm doing great today. How are you? Good, good. Now, I'm doing great. Mm -hmm. We're just hanging out at the studio here. It's like, really good to have you here. Um, you're actually the first dancer that we've talked to, so I'm kind of hoping that I'm going to learn some of the moves like subconsciously. We'll see how the conversation goes. But um, I wanted to start off with a really quick question just to get some of the context of your history um, as being a dancer. Uh, Yara, which is the one of our designers on the team and the reason why we're meeting told me that your sister had a really big impact on you on your decision to become a dancer and that's cool because my brother had a really big impact on me to become a musician so i'm curious how did that aggregate towards your goal of becoming a professional dancer when you were a kid um i would say man Definitely my sister's influence that started my passion for movement mm -hmm. and expressing myself through movement. But it was how I even thought of becoming a professional dancer was we would watch award shows like the BET Awards or like the VMAs and stuff. And we would see <clears throat> like the dancers being featured. Of course, it's not a dance show, but yeah. being able to see like someone up there with a big artist that we we always listened to was just amazing and it just became something that i definitely wanted to do even music videos like from 106 and park when they just string together music videos yeah yeah it just built my passion to want to be like that so so like it's interesting that you mentioned um movement in that way you you, you touch on that subject a little bit um as somebody who performs on stage you know singing and playing guitar movement always came really naturally but not dance moves it's more like the feeling of the moment right so to me movement was always about reaction you know there's a giant explosion and you just kind of like hit yourself over it um as a dancer how do you define movement because i'm sure it's different than for me mm -hmm. which is just a guitarist yes yes um i definitely think that movement is a, a language and mm -hmm. Body language is definitely language, but even how people react to you physically is an art form. So I love to think of dance as a just a form of movement and, and communicating um, mm -hmm. as far as, as mean, as well as something that you watched it for entertainment. So at this point, you have the goal mm -hmm. set, you know what you want to do. Um, but as artists, I feel like the moment that you identify the start of your career always feels better in hindsight right at the moment that we're in right now i mean this could be the start of my career but there's so much happening i can't appreciate it so i'm curious in your story um when did you feel like things were picking up and the industry started opening up to you oh sure so <clears throat> right out of high school well while i was in high school my senior year i auditioned for this competition called axo mm -hmm. and it's basically a competition that has all the arts dancing singing acting poetry um as well as science and like there's even people like who create who are on robux tech people um oh, cool. <clears throat> but it was just for black creators to go and like network as well as compete for to i guess compare or whatever but it was a very divine opportunity because i met 
Anthony Burrell, who is who was one of Beyonce's choreographers at the time. Oh, wow. And he was the head judge and head choreographer for the competition. And he kind of from there took me under his wing and brought me into his world as far as like anything projects he had going on. He was like, you need to come to New York and do that. And I think that was the big breakthrough in the industry was was building that connection with him. I think like the biggest thing about that is that um, you want to be ready when the Mm -hmm. connection comes. Like you need to be prepared. And it seems like you were prepared when the right person came to put their faith in you, which is probably one of the most important things about jumpstarting a career as an artist. Um, But kind of going off on that, like as an artist, I always want to throw my personality into the project. Uh, We have this need to leave our mark on something. If we can't do that, then for some reason, we might not consider ourselves as good an artist as we can be. But in dance, are you allowed to interpret the music by yourself? Um, or is it usually just scripted, choreographed before you get there without much room for you to be individualistic? Sure, yeah. I definitely think a big part of being um, a creator who's making it a career is to be a very good listener. Mm-hmm. Um, because, of course, when you take your art for making a career, you're now in customer service and you have to know how exactly what you're being asked to do. Um, yeah. And they're... they're are opportunities that you will be able to be like, hey, this is my voice and my input on it. And they'll love it. And sometimes they won't. And that's just how art works. Um, right. But definitely just opening those ears and, yeah. and understanding, <laughs> fully understanding what's being asked. Yeah. I mean, that's like some solid advice that I got um, was to listen to the client and to ask the right questions and like really try to find out what they want or need. So if you guys are looking for some advice, my beautiful listeners, there you go. There's a really good one right there. Um, But moving on, I want to ask you this. So at this point, you're working with these big artists, you're getting more jobs, you're literally making your 12 year old self extremely happy. Now, do you think there's a general checklist um, you need so that you can be noticed by larger clients? Okay, so (laughs) the name of your show. Um... (laughs) Oh God. So a check, I wouldn't say a checklist. Um, yeah. Cause I've, I've found that the connections that have taken me the furthest, it hasn't been because I, w- I had this, 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 this going right, for me. Right. It's been like a genuine, we can collaborate and create something or I see something in you that, you know, I mm-hmm. think I can nurture or develop. Mm-hmm. So I think, I would sh- maybe for me, I would stray away from the checklist and just honing on on what it is you want to do. And if the person you necessarily want to work with can work, can help you with that. And if that's something that y'all can actually link up and be, because if you're, mm-hmm. if you're an artist who doesn't necessarily, who like prefers to do freestyle mm-hmm. and you want to work with an artist that's always doing choreography, maybe hone in on more choreography classes and make yourself available to it. Um, but also be, be clear that if that's not something you want to do, if choreography is not something you want to do, maybe think about another client, another artist. Got it. Um, I think one of the things that artists struggle with sometimes is being a small piece of a larger creative system. Um, do you ever feel like you want more, like you crave the spotlight? <laughs> I think... <laughs> For, okay, it's going to be different for every dancer, just so you know. Um, right. There's some dancers that are very much happy with being part of the collab. Yeah, yeah. But for, for me, I found that I'm definitely a person who has ideas and has wants to have a voice and has a voice. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I'm, I kind of view this point in my career as information in order for me to get to my next step yeah um yeah and it doesn't feel like i never feel like i'm stuck i know i always have a choice as far as whatever and wherever i'm going Mm -hmm. so everything at this point that i'm doing is just a stepping stone to the to what a point where i can have full control or i have i'm more on the forefront of of the vision i would love to have full autistic control of a project um but I could always do that. You know, I have, you just have to know that you have that power. It's not necessarily going to be the big artist right away, Mm -hmm. but you can create something. Now you always have the opportunity to create something. Now you have your friends who you are, you're always hanging out with. What can y'all build together? 
Right. Well, speaking of working with friends, like a bunch of these kids are about to graduate college. Um, and one of the problems is that they, they haven't really learned yet how to value their work. Um, so the question becomes, do we hold out for the big clients or do we take the cheap jobs just to pay the bills? I, okay, I want to be specific with taking these cheap jobs. Okay. Because um, <laughs> I, do, I don't th I think you should get paid your rate, yeah. be paid your value. Yeah. It's about understanding what, how you can show your value. So when I first came out here, I did a music video. Who, I don't even, it was some little mix, little, little something. It was a group of European art girls. Right, and right. I did it for like 200 bucks, a 12 hour shoot oh, day. Damn. Damn. That's ridiculous, ridiculously low. Um, Jesus. And I was miserable. I was miserable on set. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> not only is it cold and I'm outside, I'm uncomfortable that I'm not, I don't even think I was really seen in the video mm -hmm. and I'm getting paid a low rate. It just is like, it, sucks. it just isn't, it's not worth it. Yeah. It's not worth it. But then I put that on my resume. It was the only music video I have on my I have on my resume now. But it shows for something. And I'm glad I did it then. After that, I never took another 200 job again. Um, but I do think it was important for me to go through that mm -hmm. to know not only how what it feels like to be in that situation to be on a job where you're not feeling like you're valued. Mm -hmm. You need to know that and not accept that ever again. Right. Um, or, or you can just listen to me about it and not do it. But <laughs> I think it was for, for, for my journey. It was important. I did yeah. it. It was it was real. Yeah. Um, for sure. And I know a lot of dancers and a lot of artists have also been through that. To add on to that, in an industry that's extremely competitive and cutthroat, how did you learn to value yourself? Mm, that's a good question. Um, it was a slow process because of. Again, I moved out here when I was 19 and I was like, I was very unsure about what, what am I really about to add to this already vast in industry? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I think, I hate to say this, but I'm just like, I'm such a person who's like, you need to know your own worth. Other people, <laughs> it started with other people yeah. who saw it in me right. and was like, you know, this is your worth. You're, um, you can be on this stage. You deserve this amount. And once I heard that, I took that to heart and I was like, mm -hmm. I need to see that in myself. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a slow process. It was not overnight. It's still, I still have to remind myself, like, your, your individual, individuality is priceless and no, and no one can actually put a number on it. Mm -hmm. But if you could, it should be this much. So speaking of valuing yourself, I don't know if you remember this, um, but after Jennifer Lopez and Shakira's performance at the Super Bowl, the FCC got 1,300 complaints from people saying that the show was just too sexual. Um, and as a female artist in the dance industry, being over-sexualized is like part of the culture. So uh, how do you deal with that? There have been jobs I've had to say no to because they were like asking me to do too much. But that's, I mean, I don't knock it if someone else decides to do it because sexuality is, is another art form. Like there's an art behind it that people want to express and share. And so I think, I don't think it, it's ever, I don't think it's hype too sexual. I think there's some choices that I'm like, that was an interesting choice, but I'm definitely a very free person as far as your expression of your sexuality in any way. I don't have to watch it if I don't want to watch it type of thing. So, so like going away from the super intricate questions and everything we'll be doing here uh, in this episode so far, I really just want to know if you could pick one song to dance to at the Super Bowl, what would you pick? Creep. Creep by Radiohead. Creep. Joe Scott did a cover to it at Afropunk. I like, cause I love, I do love that song naturally, yeah. but when, what she did to that song was spiritual right. honestly <laughs> so you can probably look it up on youtube if you want to experience what i experienced but it won't be the same because you weren't there there right. but wow yeah so it'd be creep would be dope as hell to even play at the super bowl but next question um what's the best performance you've ever had something that sent you home crying like 
you know, that, that was it. What was the best one? Um, Usher, Australia, Sydney, Australia. He was the first artist that ever gave me a solo where I could just free. I was freestyling and I had a solo. The crowd was the biggest crowd I've ever seen in my life. Um, it was, Damn. Yeah. it was insane. Like yeah. I <laughs> still know. can't believe that happened. Yeah. And when they would hold up lights, you can see even how further back it went. It was just insane. And there was this long, like, what is it called? The T that goes into the crowd. So there was crowd in front of me and some like on the side like of me. Catwalk? And yes, yeah, like a catwalk situation. Yeah. So okay. I started at the tip of the catwalk. So I felt oh. all that energy as I was like coming down the stage. Yeah, to the stage. <laughs> and it was, I literally oh, tearing God. up i miss concerts so much oh. that was the best performance just because the crowd's energy was so giving right i can't it was such an exchange <laughs> all right next one what was the worst performance you've ever had um i would have to go back to like childhood performances honestly no i got one so i wouldn't i would i didn't mess i didn't mess up to the a point that was like crazy bad but there was a sierra performance yeah um in montreal last year that we learned a whole hour set so that had to be like 15 numbers all of her classics basically <laughs> we learned them we learned them in two days yeah we we're in all the numbers so the first of all when i got to montreal i got sick i got food poisoning uh, so the night, of, <laughs> the night of the show my stomach was like <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's not, it not okay oh, so man. i get on stage i'm already like what is it about to be because i barely have these numbers in my body yeah um and so we did it i i this is the only time i can really remember messing up on stage but of course i just kept going i'm like whatever we're <laughs> we're here yeah. so, <laughs> but I, mess up at all I, there was I messed up a lot, actually. We all did because we all learned the show right. in two days. Right. So we all were messing up, um, but not again. We're all professionals, so it probably didn't look like it to everyone else. Mm -hmm. But it was not the best one for the dancers, I don't think. Right. And after, I wasn't like, "Dang, what, what's wrong?" I was just like, "Wow, hmm. humble yeah. yourself." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we always kind of need that stuff as artists. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Humble a little bit. Mm hmm. It's like a nightmare. Awesome. So, thank you for going into those. Um, I want to close the episode with something that I think hits home for a lot of kids who are finding it hard right now uh, to sustain themselves and to start of their careers. So, to really help them cope with this shit. What did you do to sustain yourself while you danced in the beginning of the career? Was it, did your mom help you out? Were you waiting, uh, waiting tables? What was that like? Sure. Um, so be right before I moved to LA, I worked at Forever 21 for like three months, which is not a lot. It saved me up like a thousand dollars maybe, but I literally, I bought my ticket to LA with that and paid like my first couple months rent with that. And I had, a lot of support for my mom. Like when I tell you my mom is a superwoman, I cannot like you these support systems are so important. Whether it's your family or your friends, you really need to build a strong support system. Not even just financially, but but spiritually. And someone that, that just supports your growth as a person. Um, but she she paid for my lift. She paid if I needed help with like my rent at the beginning, she she had it like she was like you need to do this like very much but that i did that for like was really she was holding me down for like four months and then i i booked something that took me out of the country for three months thank goodness so she could get that money back but <laughs> yeah. it, it definitely like your support says i had support mm -hmm. um i still have friends now that if they need money i got them if they if i need money they got me it's, mm -hmm. You just, you have to have those, those people around you that just yeah. love you and know that life is this and Absolutely. you need people. <laughs> so I wanted to thank you for coming on the podcast. Um, <laughs> for me, like this was an important 
conversation just because mm -hmm. it's been a long time since I've been on a stage. Um, and that was literally my life. That's all I ever wanted to do. So it helps me kind of cope with this by myself to see another performing artist going through the same thing where just we're not on stage and we're not going to be on stage for a while. Um, so it felt good to know that I wasn't alone in that and i know it never was but just hearing it from me was good um so thank you for coming on the show you know i really appreciate having someone like yourself who just kind of persevered through it and is doing what they wanted to do and hopefully that's you know i'll be smart and dedicated enough like you to, to make it happen for myself too and all the kids listening make it happen for themselves as well so thank you again for coming um and we'll talk soon and you're gonna teach me how to fucking dance i'm sure Nick, thank you for having me. This is really, really great. I'm glad um, we could. I could talk to another artist because this, this shit is it's very again, it's very personal. But to know that other artists feel similarly is so important. I feel the same way. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming in. It's good to see you. Have, have a good one. Hey guys, thank you so much for sticking around for this episode. I hope you liked it as much as I did. Make sure to check us out on social media at OKSO okay Media on in Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, all that good stuff. Talk to us. If you guys have any questions, if you need someone to talk to, if your life is falling apart and you want to just vent, we're here for you. Make sure to send us a message on Instagram, for example. If you want to check out Akila's work, head over to her Instagram at Akila. That's A-A-H-K-I-L-A-H. This episode was produced by Oka Studio, and that's kind of it for today. We'll see you guys next time. Lights out. Hey! Yeah. Ah!